This is a critically endangered yellow crested cockatoo. The bird has been nearly wiped out from its original habitats in Southeast Asia. Globally, there are only 2,000 left in the wild, but about 10% of them have found an unlikely sanctuary in Hong Kong. The population that we have here is actually quite important to the survival of this species. Although they're not from China, these beautiful, boisterous birds have found a new home in the concrete jungle. Astrid Anderson is a PhD student who grew up in Hong Kong and is now studying the city's wild cockatoos. There is this story that the governor had an aviary full of yellow-crested cockatoos and when the Japanese invaded in the Second World War, he just released them. So our working theory is this population is made up from escaped or released pets that have just augmented over a period of like 20, 30, 40 years. It was related to people's desire to have this kind of glamorous looking white big bird with a loud personality. But very quickly, I think people realized that it doesn't make a very good pet. It's very noisy. It lives for about 60 to 70 years often outlives its owner. Um, it can be very messy. Something like 5,000 birds are on exhibition at the horticultural... The cockatoo has historically been a popular pet because of its intelligence and ability to perform tricks. This means war. YouTube is full of videos of dancing cockatoos. Even the voice of wildlife documentaries, David Attenborough once kept a pet cockatoo. Sir David's cockatoo was likely a sulfur crested cockatoo, not a yellow crested one. So what's the difference? They look very similar to our endangered yellow crested cockatoo, but the sulfur crested cockatoo is larger, not threatened, and commonly seen in Australia and New Guinea. The yellow crested cockatoos from Southeast Asian countries like Indonesia are less fortunate. They are now critically endangered because of a double whammy of habitat loss and rampant pet trade. In the 70s, 80s, early 90s, cockatoos were a hugely popular cage bird and in Indonesia they exported over 78,000 yellow-crested cockatoos in that period to various places including the US, Europe, Hong Kong, Singapore. So they really overexploited that population. An international trade ban against wild-caught yellow-crested cockatoos came into force in 2002. But in spite of the potential five-year jail term in Indonesia, some smugglers still try to sneak these precious birds out. We asked Andy Kefi, a ranger in Indonesia, to tell us more about who the cockatoo poachers are. Local people, are, they don't uh, profess prof for to catch or hunt cockatoo, but they only like fishing or or looking for something and they, they show them like still in the nesting and they take the baby to like to sell for not so big money that's only maybe under 100 US dollar not so much the poachers don't earn much but when the birds change hands that's when the price goes up cockatoos can fetch quite a lot of money at bird markets like this one in hong kong during a recent visit we saw a few cockatoos including a smaller species that looks very similar to the endangered one the seller said the bird was a sulfur crested cockatoo, not the endangered one, but he was ambiguous about where the bird came from. In Hong Kong, it is still legal to trade endangered cockatoos that are either bred in captivity or obtained before the trade ban, but enforcement can be tricky. Meanwhile, the cockatoos in Hong Kong have adapted to the urban environment in interesting ways, according to Astrid, who has traveled to Indonesia on research trips. The cockatoos in Komodo did seem more people shy. I could definitely tell that they didn't let me get as close to them as the Hong Kong ones do. I think that the Hong Kong ones are really habituated to this urban environment and loads of people, cars, etc. 
the way to help the cockatoos is for the general public to really raise awareness and inform themselves about how we have this critically endangered species here in our city and we should celebrate that. So I think it's important to protect the nest holes and the big trees that are there and also support the population breeding efforts. Okay, so at dusk they all roost in Hong Kong Park. They come together to sleep in a communal situation. When I see that in the centre of Hong Kong, it really illustrates to me what a unique situation we have here and how special it is. And it gives me inspiration to continue to try and protect them and raise awareness about them. If you like the story, we have more videos about sustainability. Check out our series called Wild and subscribe to Goldfriend.